Hey there, Stampers. Happy Friday. Welcome to this week's Facebook Live. My name is Sherry Roth. I'm a Stampin' Up! demonstrator from Alberta, Canada, and I'm excited to be here live with you. It's been a couple weeks. Um, last week I was in Calgary for Creative Scrapbookers Scrapbooking Carnival, um, so I missed out on the live. Well, I did a quick live booth tour. Um, from the event, but I missed a creative live. So I'm excited to be back to share with you today. So the last video I did was I created this fun, or I shared how to create this fun shaker card. It's a simple version of a shaker card. Um, and thank you to everyone who commented and shared that video. I appreciate all of the comments. And I drew a lucky winner, and Beth Merkel is the lucky winner for this card. So I will pop that in the mail. Beth, I believe I have your address. So thank you so much. Uh, just a couple things that I wanted to cover before um, we get into our crafty project today. So we are nearing the end of these two catalogs, the January to April 2023 mini catalog, as well as the annual catalog. So we've got just over a week left of these two catalogs. Make sure that you check the last chance list, that you make sure you've picked up everything that you want that might be retiring, um, because then they will be gone for good but there's lots of great new products coming out in the annual catalog. Now, if you've shopped with me within the last, um, I think it's six or eight months I chose, um, then I have a catalog for you. So if you are outside of the Shore Park area, I did mail those catalogs this past week. Some of you have received them, I know, because you've, I, you've been sending me messages. Um, but those of you who are local to the Sherwood Park area, I will be delivering, I'm hoping, on Saturday. So you can watch your mailbox for some fun reading. Lots of great stuff in here. Um, okay, now today we are going to play with a mix of products. So I've got some brand new products. Um, this is my color combination that I'm using today. So Mossy Meadow, which is a current product, and then Copper Clay and Wild Wheat. These are two of the new in colors, and I absolutely love the in colors this year. So excited about them. Uh, they're so different from the in colors from last year. Um, and yeah, I've heard mixed reviews about them. Some of you love them, some of you, I think it'll take time for you to get used to them because they are very, very different. But I love how muted they are and they're just so trendy. I, I, I've been having so much fun playing with them. So this is the color combination that we're gonna use today. And we are going to use, there's not a whole lot of stamping on the project today, but I'm going to use this image from the Queen Bee stamp set. Um, now this stamp set is carrying over. The coordinating dies, which are on sale, are not carrying over. But the stamp set is, it will, it's not pictured in the annual catalog, the new annual catalog, but it will be available as an online exclusive. So I just wanted to point that out. If this set is on your wish list, you may want to pick up the dies while you still can. All right. And then we are using these dies, which both of these are carrying over. So this is from the January to April mini catalog. So the Sentimental Park dies. I'm not using the stamp set, but I wanted to show you the stamp set. Um, both of these are carrying over. However, they're not, they are not carrying over as bundle pricing. So I wanted to point that out. And then what else are we using today here? We are using, I'm going to use the largest circle from the Stylish Shapes. I'm going to use the Amazing Thanks dies which these are not carrying over. These are retiring and they are on sale and I love these dies. So we're gonna use the thanks today. And then what, oh, um, we're also going to use this Petal Park Punch, which is carrying over. So this coordinates with the Petal Park stamp set and is available in the current mini catalog as a bundle, but will not be available at, at bundle pricing in the new catalog. And then the last thing I wanted to share that we'll be using today is the Artistic Mix Decorative Masks. So let me just share the masks that are in here. So we've got this one, and these are carrying over. We've got this one. 
We've got this one, and these two actually layer really nicely. You can see that they're meant to layer. You don't have to use them as a layer. We're gonna use this one today. And then there is also these two here. All right, and I will be starting a series on, I think it's May 5th or May 2nd, whatever the first Friday of May is, I will be starting a series on different ways to use masks. So Stampin' Up! calls their these things masks. A lot of people also call them stencils, but they're basically the same idea. All right, so I will be kicking off the month of May with um, a whole series of videos on different ways to use masks. So I'm super excited about that. Okay, so let's get into today's project. So we're gonna work on a square card. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna share how you can create a wreath just using random products on a card, all right? And I love, first of all, it's a little bit more difficult to create a wreath unless you're using really tiny images, a little bit more difficult to create a wreath on a regular size card. So I like to make them on a little bit of a larger card and I love them on a square card. So my card base size is five and a quarter by 10 and a half and then it's scored at five and a quarter. And this is a piece of the Wild Wheat cardstock. So I'm just gonna fold that and we're gonna set that aside. And then I've got a white piece for the inside, which I'll just set aside. This is, I think it's five by five. Yeah, five by five. And then I've got a piece of mossy meadow that measures four and three quarters by four and three quarters, and a piece of white that measures four and five eighths by four and five eighths. All right, and this is the piece that we're gonna do everything on, pretty much everything. All right, good morning, Lena, good morning, Layla. Good morning, Darlene, good morning, Barb, welcome. All right, okay, so I'm gonna take my masks at mask and I'm gonna position it on top of here. I'm not gonna bother putting it onto a piece of scrap paper uh, because I'm only going to add a little bit of pattern kind of in the center. And I'm gonna use the Wild Wheat ink Actually, you know what? I am going to use, I mean, I'm going to stick it down. Just to make sure my paper doesn't move underneath. You can kind of see that I've been playing around with some masks as I prepare for my series in May. Super excited. All right, so I've just used a little bit of temporary adhesive and I'm just gonna hold my cardstock in place. Now this, I'm, I've got lots of space to hold this and I'm only going to ink in the center so I'm not too concerned with it moving around so I'm not gonna bother taping it down. I'm gonna take my blending brush which is my favorite way to use stencils. I'm gonna tap off the excess, make sure my stencil is straight and then just with a light hand because I want it to be really subtle, I'm just gonna go kind of around Kind of hard to tell where the edge of the cardstock is here. Around the edges. I'm gonna lift it up just to see what it looks like. That looks great. Okay, so just kind of in the center there. I'll set this aside. Now to clean your masks, all you need to do is just run them under warm water and then I usually just dry them off with a paper towel. Okay, so I'll we'll set that aside, set this aside. Now what I'm gonna do is I find this super helpful. I will take a, something that's circular. It can be a cup, it can be a paper plate, it can be one of your stencils depending on the size that you're working with. And I just position this down and I'm going to draw a circle. This is gonna help me ensure that my wreath is in a circle and not some sort of wonky shape. And this pencil line will get covered over, so I'm not too concerned with it, but you can always go back and erase it if you are just stamping right over top. Okay, that's the only thing I've used the, the stylus shape circles for. And now we are going to create our focal point here. So what I'm gonna do is I've got some copper clay cardstock and my Petal Park Punch. 
And I'm going to punch out, actually, you know what? I only want the two, the, the two smaller flowers. All right. So I've got those. I'm going to set that larger one aside. And I've got some smaller ones here. I've done, I've done some of these in advance because we're going to need several of them. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my copper clay ink and my sponge dauber and I'm going to ink around the edges. And this just gives a little bit more detail to the flower. So if we compare the two, you can kind of see that it just gives it a bit more dimension. So I'm going to do that for both of these or for all of these. I'll just go around the edges. And then we're going to bring in, I'm going to set those aside for now. We're going to bring in our mini stamping cut and emboss because we're going to do some die cutting. Okay, so I need a little piece of this. And some olive, or not olive, mossy meadow cardstock. Okay, so I've got in here, so these are the Sentimental Park dies. I'm going to use this one. And I'm actually going to cut this apart. I really just want this for the leaves. It doesn't matter what shape it is. Um, it does kind of have a little bit of a curve. So if you are doing a big circle or a big wreath, this would work well because it does have kind of that curve. But I'm going to cut this apart and basically just use the leaves. So we're going to do that. And then I'm going to use these, this die, which will cut out three of these flowers. And then I'm going to do two of these medium sized ones as well. The other thing that I'm going to do while I have my machine out is I am going to cut my greeting from the amazing thanks. So I have a piece of black cardstock and a piece of our adhesive sheets. So I've cut this and you can peel off the backing of this. So this piece is just slightly smaller than my black cardstock. I like to make sure it's smaller so that I don't get any stickiness that hangs over the edge and then makes my plates all sticky. Okay, so I've stuck that on the back and I'm gonna flip it over and I'm gonna die cut the word thanks. Okay, so I think that's all the die cutting that we need to do. So let's grab our machine. So I am using the Boho Blue Mini Machine, which is available to demonstrators at the moment. This is another one of our in colors. So you can kind of see if you put this color together and this color together with that boho blue, they just all coordinate so beautifully. All right, so we're going to stick this on here and let's do the thanks. We'll have to do a few passes through here. And then we'll put our top plate on. You can see that mine is really well used. It's cracked there, but you know what? It still works. So I'm determined to use it until it absolutely needs to be replaced. All right, so let's pop these back on here so we don't lose them. And we've got these beautiful leaves. And then we've got our thanks. We'll just leave that on there now, for now. I'll pop this on here and cut out our little flowers. These are gonna be the centers for the flowers that we just punched. Okay, so we can set this aside. We better pop these back on here so we don't lose them. They're so tiny. All 
Okay, so we've got our flowers. So now we're gonna finish assembling our flowers. So I'm gonna kind of curl this up with my fingers. I'm gonna sponge around the edges, again, just using that copper clay, give it a bit more dimension. And I need two of the medium-sized ones and two of the small ones. Okay, we'll set that guy aside. This is such a fun time of the year when to be a demonstrator, when we can combine, we get some new products, but we get to combine it with some current product, some carryover product, some retiring product. It's just so fun to play with all of this stuff. Okay, we're gonna add a little dot of multi-purpose glue to the center here. So the new catalog goes live to customers on May 2nd. And we're gonna pop that right in the center. So I'm curling up the petals just a little bit to give it a bit more dimension. Hey, Lori. What's the weather like in Kingston today? Okay, so now I'm going to bring in my Stamp and Pierce mat and... My take your pick tool and I've got the stylus tip on it. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna push down and that will give the flower a bit more dimension. It just kind of makes it pop up. And this, this is one of the attachments for the take your pick tool. And there's two different sizes for the stylus and I'm using the, the thicker of the two. Okay. 20 degrees, wow, nice. All right, so we've got a whole bunch more flowers here that I've created, and I've got a couple extra leaves, so we're gonna set this aside. We wanna do one more thing to this before we start assembling our, our wreath. So this is where this stamp from the Queen Bee stamp set comes in. I love this stamp. It's great for creating like little subtle backgrounds. So I'm just gonna ink this up with some copper clay and I'm gonna stamp off, actually I'm gonna stamp off twice. I really want this to be very subtle. And I'm just adding a little bit of detail around the edges. Okay, so now it's time to start assembling our, um, our wreath. So I've got all my flowers here. I've got a couple of these leaves that I've kind of set aside or separated. And we can probably trim these, these little bits off. And I'll poke out these pieces. So I'm going to adhere these first. Or a couple of them anyways, two or three of them. So I'm just kind of following the circular path here. So to separate these, all I did was right here, I just trimmed that down like that. You can poke out the pieces. And then we'll trim the stem off. We'll add this one. And you can see that I'm only doing a little bit of adhesive on here because I really want there to be some dimension. So we'll do that one there and I think we'll do one more. I'm gonna save these ones, these smaller two leaf stems to kind of tuck in afterwards because they're a little bit smaller. It's kind of, it's good to have something a little bit smaller so that you can tuck it in to as a filler. Let's see, should we do it this way?
Okay, we're definitely going to need some more leaves in there, but we'll start with this. Now I'm going to take my flowers and kind of add my flowers in. So I'm going to start with some big ones. I haven't actually done this card yet. This I'm just kind of winging it, which I've been doing a little bit more often lately. Do big ones first. It's kind of fun to just go have an idea and just kind of go with it, play around. I just hope that, I always just hope that the card turns out okay in the end. Um, here let's do this guy up here okay now let's fill it in with some of these smaller ones so I'm gonna kind of tuck this underneath here if I can Oops. Some, I might pop some of these up actually. All right, let's, let's just place some of these in here so that we can see what we're looking at. This is definitely gonna need some green under here. So let's grab some green and I'm going to trim off the stems just like I did on the other one. Let's pop this in here. Let's grab some mini dimensionals and we'll use, so get some dimension on this wreath. Pop this one up. Okay, and maybe we'll pop one up here. Oh, you know what I should do before I get too far into this is I should add my greeting because we might pop this one up as well. Well, maybe we'll stick it underneath. Okay, let's add the greeting first. Okay, so I'm going to take my greeting just because I don't want it to get too full in here and then make it difficult to add afterwards. So you can even use the negative space for this. <clears throat> so the reason I use the, or one of the reasons I use the um, adhesive sheets is so that it doesn't get messy having to add glue. So this basically turns it into a sticker. So now all I need to do is just peel off the backing and it's sticky because those adhesive sheets are sticky on both sides. You just have to be very careful when you separate it. These, these words are so fine and you don't want to rip them. Okay, and I like to use my tweezers to kind of hold it in place. So this, you can see why I need to kind of do this. Now, you can also use our foam adhesive sheets which will allow you to create a dimensional word. So I'm kind of manipulating these, this a little bit. We might have to peel this one off. There we go. Okay, I'm gonna pop this back on here. Okay. 
All right, let's see, where else do we need some flowers? First of all, we gotta stick this guy on. And maybe another one there. Let's pop this guy up. And maybe one under here. Maybe we want some more leaves there. I've got kind of a big batch of flowers here. I think we're gonna tuck another one under there. So you can see I'm kind of following the circle just going to kind of curl this up a little bit, give these leaves a little bit more dimension. We do need one more under there. We'll stick that one on there. Morning, Carol. Okay, let's see here. I'm not sure I like that underneath there. I might pop it up on top. Okay, do we wanna tuck any more of these leaves in here? Let's see. So you can do this idea with so many different things. It doesn't just have to be flowers. A little bit of green there. I like that, we're gonna stick it up there. You could get creative and do anything small and it doesn't have to be punched or die cut images. It can be, um, it can be um, stamped images as well. You can stamp around your wreath. I've done one with butterflies before for a scrapbook layout. I've done punched circles. So it just depends on the size of your image and the size of your wreath. All right, so last thing I wanna do for this is I've got this linen thread bow. Actually, this isn't quite the last thing. I think I want it to go right there. I'm gonna use a mini glue dot for this. And we're gonna tuck it right in here. like that. Okay, and we can go ahead and finish assembling our card. I know, fabulous color combination, right? I love these colors. So this is just gonna have a little bit, like a smidge of that green showing around the edges, about a sixteenth of an inch. And then we're gonna stick this to our wheat card base. And I have one more thing that I wanna to add to the front of this. Now these are already sold out, but I have a few left and I really wanted to use them because they're so cute. These are the dragonfly trinkets that were in the, um, that were in the mini catalog. Unfortunately, they're, they are no longer available. Just wanna to try to figure out how many I want here. I might just do one. Yeah, I think I might just do one. But if you have the bumblebee trinkets that we used to carry, or we've had ladybug trinkets, we've had lots of little insects. So any of those would work. Actually, the ladybug ones, because they were kind of vintage-y, those would look super cute with this color combination. All right, and then we have the inside of our card. We'll tuck that inside. 
And I think what I might do, just to bring in a little bit of color on the inside, I think I'm gonna add a little bit of the mask on here, just kind of in the corner. Just a little bit in the corner and we'll do it up here as well. So, and I'm just doing it really, really lightly. And then let's add, let's do this stamped image as well. Gonna line this up with my cardstock since I've already stuck it down. And we'll do it up here as well. Perfect, and that brings just a little bit of color to the inside of the card, and there is our card. I think it turned out really cute. You know what, I think it might need just one more leaf here. Let's see. No, maybe not. Just feel like it needs something. Oh, maybe there. Okay, we're gonna, we're gonna tuck it in right there. So when you create a wreath, it really just is all about just kind of playing around and getting it to the look that you would like to achieve. Ah, you know what? Let's do our envelope. Let's mimic what we did on the inside for our envelope. So I'm gonna bring back that stencil. There's probably enough ink on my blending brush. Just make sure it's straight. And then do a little bit of this. There, we've got a matching envelope. And there is a super cute thank you card. Love it with some fun new colors and yeah, some product that's retiring, some product that's carrying over. Super excited about the release of the new catalog. I've got, I've been creating a ton of projects and I can't wait to share with you. All right, so thanks so much for watching. If there's anything that you saw today that you would like to order, make sure that you make note of what it is and if it's carrying over because remember, you've got just over a week left of this annual catalog and mini catalog, and then those products will be gone for good. All right, thanks so much for watching. Have a fabulous weekend, guys. Take care.